Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at what is perhaps my favorite application of 2021. And that's a big statement because I use a ton of applications on this channel. And this one is even more impressive because, frankly, it's a mobile application. What we're looking at today is Nomad Sculpt. And you're going to check this out on a iPad Pro using a pencil, and it's just an amazing combination. This is hands down my favorite way to sculpt. I prefer this over Blender. I prefer this over ZBrush. I prefer this over Sculptress. I prefer this over over 3D coat, it's just my favorite workflow. And I'm gonna start off with a real world example. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna load up a model. You can bring in GLTF or OBJ format here. This one is like a 75 plus megabyte file, 1.15 million vertices, I believe. And look at the performance, just just beautiful. And I'm, I'm using a uh, finger to over it, pinch to zoom, and then of course I have the pencil for actually drawing. And we're gonna go ahead and modify this guy slightly. And you notice again, this is 1.1 million vertices, but let's up the game a bit. We're coming here to the topology section. You see here, you got a ton of options, even for dynamic topology, you can do voxel remeshing. We'll get to that in a bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to subdivide this guy. So now we're gonna have 4.63 million vertices. And now look at the performance, no hit. This thing can push out 5 million vertex, vertices, no problem, on a mobile device, not plugged in. Battery isn't hard. Uh, it's not getting hot. Amazing, amazing tool. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and we're going to make this guy just a little bit happier. He doesn't look too happy right now. So I'm just going to drop the radius of that down, increase the intensity up, and we're just going to make him happy. A bit more radius, a bit more. We'll just bring the surface out like so. And we might want to pull away some of that creasing. So we come down here, grab the crease brush, and you can actually negative things. So see, there's the sub over here. We're going to do a negative crease. We're going to take some of the creasing out. So we don't want him to have a joker rictus grin. And there we go. We now have a happy devil. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's move that in slightly. It's, it's a little bit too far. There we go. So now we've got a smirking happy devil. So you can see that is simple how the sculpting tools work. But on top of that, there's also texture painting in here and it works very, very nicely. So let's go ahead and let's say we want to work on these eyeball. Oops, did not mean to do that. By the way, there's undo like so. It's going to come in here and see his green eyeball right there. We're going to go ahead and texture paint that. So to do that, we go over here to the paint tab like so. I'm going to switch out the paint color right here to a white like so. Let's drop our radius down quite a bit, increase our intensity up quite a bit, and let's just start drawing. By the way, ton of control over the brushes. Over here, you'll see you got control over the paint itself, and you got control over the stroke, uh, including uh, you've got multiple different options. So if you'd rather, you can actually do grab fill, which is actually kind of nice because you're just doing a radius-based paint, like so, or we can go back to uh, what we were just using, the dot and we can just go to a traditional stroke-based painting. So let's get most of that out of there. Use the PBR workflow so you can set the, met, uh, the metal map up, the metalness, the roughness, and so on of the object. All right, there we go. So we got uh, that going on. By the way, there's also layering support here. So if you want to do the eyes in their own layer, hey, we can do that. You also have control over what they affect um, by the layer. And now that we've got that, let's come in here, we'll switch to a dark object. Full intensity, smaller object, and let's just do a pupil. So there is our pupil, like so. By the way, everything is being painted symmetrically. That's controlled by this toggle right here. So you'll notice as I paint on one side, the other, oops, undo, undo. The other side is painting as well. So let's just finish that out, put something in there. And let's go back to the white, like so, like so. There you go. So there is how easy it is to go ahead and paint. Now, obviously, you can work at a much higher level. So let's say we were working on his skin. I want to make this guy a little bit more devilish. Increase the radius up. Take the intensity down. And now we can just basically start painting the surface as we wish. Obviously, it is pressure sensitive. You've got control over how the pressure works right here. Um, you can paint. You do not need a pencil, by the way, so you can do this however you want. So let's say, yeah, so we can go ahead and start texturing him down quickly. So let's do the back. So again, more strokes, the darker it gets. We've also got the ability to do um, on top of that, which by the way, I could do as a new layer. So let's add one more layer in. And let's do this as say dark. And we're going to paint some scratches. So we're going to come down here and we're going to pick a texture to paint with. Now you're going to watch the effect of this one. So this is going to layer this on top. So see, we're adding a dark scratchy layer like so. 
and there you can see the effect without the color on like that. By the way, layers at any particular time can be hidden, can be removed. So you can use this guy to do some really cool texture painting effects as well. Now, one thing you may have noticed, let me just go ahead. Here, we'll start a new one. So new, new scene. And we're going to start with the default cube, which is a sphere at this point. I'm going to come here. Let's make it gold. And we're going to fill it. All right, so there you see we've got a very shiny um, sphere in our scene. I'm orbiting the camera. You can see at the top, you can orbit the camera there, or you can switch to a direct perspective by clicking on it accordingly. I can do a three-finger orbit, and what we're doing is um, moving the, um, the environment map in the background. Speaking of which, you got control of that over here in the lighting. So we can do various different environment maps. We can change the exposure amount of them. We can rotate them manually here as well. So you have control over that. Speaking of which, you can also come in here. You do not have to use anything. You could actually do shading, uh, matte cap shading, or you do unlit shading, which can be useful depending on what style of stuff you're modeling. Um, let's go back to the PBR workflow. All right, so that is uh, the lighting effects in here. We also got special effects. We got a number of special effects, to be honest. So here we can see, uh, we can turn on, let's do full resolution, screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, depth of field, bloom, Tone mapping, ACES tone mapping. We can change the exposure right there. So that's that's a lot of exposure. So we're going to turn Bloom off. Bloom always makes things bad. Uh, got control over chromatic aberration, vignetting, grain, sharpness, anti-aliasing, and so on. You can also actually render directly out of here to an image. You can change the background if you wish. There is a ton of options here. Uh, we can also view things as wireframe if we wish. You can switch between perspective and north orthographic views right there. Uh, really kind of cool stuff. Now, another thing you can do is you can create compound objects. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to delete this. This is my scene view right here. You notice at the bottom, I have a number of different cube uh, primitives I can work with. You can also get that over here in the insert. Same result. So you see down the left-hand toolbar. So if I want to do a box, I can do a box, drop that in the scene, and we can control the size of the box right here. So yeah, I'm good with that one. So now I can do another box. Like so. And we drag that into the scene. And we got controls over it right there. By the way, once you've got that in place, you can use gizmos. So you can move things around accordingly, like so. And now that we've got these two objects in the world, what I can actually do is come back here and grab them both. And we do a simple merge or a voxel-based merge. And I'll do a voxel merge. Now we've got one object. So if I do sculpting on this one, it will sculpt across the surfaces. So you can create these compound objects quick and easy. So if you wanted to do, you can block out your character and then sculpt on top of it. By the way, then once you've got it, you can start coming in here and doing uh, retopology on it. So if you want to create uh, more polygons, so here we're up to 2.2 million polygons. Here, let's kill it. 8 million polygons. There we go. So now we're dealing 8 million polygons here, and let's see what we did to performance. Okay, that's where we're starting to kill the performance a bit. So I can get about 4 million polygons without having any performance hit, but yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive in that regard. Another neat thing here is we've got some cool tools built in for primitives. So let's um, create a new scene here. Again, let's get rid of the sphere. Uh, so go away, sphere. All right, so what I can do now is I could do, say, for example, a lathe tool. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to switch to curve mode, and I'm basically just going to draw a curve. And there you see, it lays it, we've got control over it, we can bring things in, we can add a control point if we wish. So if you're making certain shaped objects, you're just not going to beat this workflow. You've also got the ability to do the same thing. Let me just start over. Uh, we've also got for tubes, so we can come in here and we can create a tube. Like so, you can use either uh, curve or path. So let's do curve, like so. And I can say, I could close it if I wish. It's not closed, it's not connected to each other. But like so, easily create shapes that way. Uh, you've got tools for automatically filling holes. Uh, it, it's really impressive, the functionality that is in here out of the box. And again, all of your options are available up here if they have any particular uh, special options. And then when we're done, there we go. And this is like a normal object, so we can and sculpt it, change it, work with it accordingly. Easy, easy peasy, really cool stuff to work with for sure. Uh, so that is kind of the 
basics of it. There's a ton more here that I've not quite gotten into. One of the other neat things I didn't really showcase you, and this is really useful if you are doing game development, is let's bring our one million polygon object back, like so. And let's say we want to go ahead and export this out. Well, we got a couple of options. First off, you can save as, um, or sorry, you, you can save locally, or you can also export as uh, GLTF, OBJ, or STL formats. And you've got control over exporting the, the painting, the colors, the layers, and so on. So you can get it out GLTF, ready to use in your own game engine of choice. Um, we've also got the ability back here to the topology, this is really useful for game development, is we could do voxel remeshing, so we could say, how much resolution to use there, or I can actually come down here and do decimation. So I can say, how many triangles do I want to get rid of? Decimate it. And here's what you can see. It's going to do a dynamic reduction of it. So now we're down to 576,000 from uh, 1.1 million, I think it was. And we could do it again and get an idea of just how much capability it's got. So there we go. And now we are down to uh, 286 polygons. And we're not losing a ton of detail here. So you can also use this to easily do multi-resolution sculpting. And it does a really good job with its decimation algorithm. Again, all the combination of tools that are available in here just make it a beautiful thing to work with. By the way, you've also got the ability to come in here and do minimal. So you can have it just um, show the tools that you need. And we can pop back out. So let's say we're doing move, change things out there. We could go again. There is also a, a four, finger, four finger press. You can do the same thing. So if you want to have distraction free, you can work with it like this. And it is hands down one of the nicest experiences I've seen for sculpting. This one again is available. It's Nomad Sculpt available on iOS and Android. Again, it's 20, 25 bucks. Unfortunately, I bought it on both platforms, so I can't see the pricing now, uh, but definitely one I recommend checking out. And again, it's probably my favorite application I have used in 2021 on the iPad Pro uh, with a pencil. Great combination. Highly recommend check out Nomad Sculpt. And yeah, that's it. Have you used it? What do you think of it? Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.